Good morning, South Africa. We hope you're all keeping well. Thank you for your time and joining us today for this webinar, moving online in 48 hours. I am Sarah Shuja and I'm a marketing manager based in Dubai. Before we proceed, I'm just going to pause and check if the audio connection is working okay. So if you can hear my voice, there is a hand icon on your screen. It's on the right side of the screen. It should be just below your name. Uh, please check on the hand icon if you can hear me. Oh, excellent, excellent. You guys are well versed with this. I, I see a lot of hands going up. Thank you so much for doing that. I'll quickly brief you over the webinar that we have planned for you today. It's an exciting session and we hope you really enjoy it. We are going to cover how you can move online, your teaching online and quickly and effectively. We will hear from instructors who will share their experiences and challenges of moving online. But before we get into that, we will start off with Madeline, who will talk about the online education in South Africa, followed by Moena to cover the science behind effective learning. And finally, you will hear from our wonderful instructors who have moved online. And lastly, we will discuss how you can actually move online in 48 hours. Is it really possible? Can you do it? So we will cover that up during the end. And this will be covered by Madeline. A bit of background, moving on to the moderators actually first. So I have with me my colleagues, Afsana and Michelle, and we will be moderating the session for you today. So if you have any questions for the speakers, please add them on the Q&A box that's on the right side of your screen. Or you can also chat to us using the chat box. We are also going to have, have a Q&A session towards the end of the webinar, so we can cover your questions towards the end. But feel free to drop them in the Q&A box that's on your right side. Just a bit of background on the speakers for today. Thank you everyone for giving your time and joining us today. We're delighted to have Madeline join us. She's the Regional Sales Director, South Africa, McGraw Hill, and also Moena Krago. Moena is a Director, Enterprise and Business Development, again at McGraw Hill. And we have our two wonderful speakers, Mark Wilson, who is a lecturer in Financial Management and Investment Analysis from Cape Peninsula University of Technology. And we also have Professor Alex Antonis, Head of Department, Department of Business Management, University of Pretoria. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly. I hope I have not. But thank you, everyone. And thank you especially to the speakers for giving their time and joining us today. I'm going to pass over to my colleague, Afsana, who is going to cover the housekeeping slides. And once she's done with that, we can begin. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great time. Thank over you, to you, Afsana. Hello. Okay, perfect. So as Sarah just mentioned, um, just before we do begin the session, I will run over a bit of housekeeping, um, just to make sure the experience for you all is as seamless as possible today. Um, so just in terms of audio, so if you are having any issues, we do recommend calling in using your phone. Um, of course, if you're on your computer and having no issues, feel free to use that as well, but just generally we do find that calling in using the phone doesn't impact the audio as much. Um, and that's usually between, because of networking issues. So if you have anyone that's using Netflix, YouTube, or any gaming platforms um, on your same internet or network that you're using, that can impact the connection as well. However, if you do miss out on anything, we are recording the session today. And I know a few of you have already asked that in the chat box. So the session is being recorded, and we will be circulating the recording afterwards as well on email. Um, so that email will probably arrive in your inbox within a week of the webinar, um, and that will also include your certificate of participation. Um, there will be a Q&A at the end, so ask questions and um, use the chat box in the Q&A if you have any comments, questions, um, just generally anything that you might want to kind of comment with or discuss with panellists, um, just drop them in there. And if you do have any technical issues, um, just use the chat box on the right-hand side, and I will be able to help. Well, okay, so we'll begin now and I'll pass on to my brain. Thanks, Afsana. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madeline. 
Thank you. Well, um, just from my side, good morning to everybody. Um, you know, I think for a lot of people, um, the South African team is quite familiar. So um, I think um, I'm a familiar face to many. Um, so firstly, the shift to blended or hybrid teaching and learning methodologies has been a reality within higher education for the last few years. But the current COVID-19 pandemic has been an accelerator um, for the shift towards online delivery, with, with many institutions formulating and implementing, implementing a, an emergency remote teaching um, strategy um, and putting that in place. But for others who had already have um, a, a online teaching and learning strategy, it was basically a matter of changing course and refining the current teaching and learning methodology. Now, well-planned online learning experiences are meaningful, um, and a, a difference from course offers, um, course being offered online as well as um, courses being offered online in response to an emergency or a crisis. Now, due to the, the, the threat of COVID-19, universities are facing decisions about how to continue to, de to deliver their teaching and learning online. Um, moving instruction online, as we know, can um, first enable flexibility, um, ensuring that your students can, can learn anywhere, anytime. Um, but the speed um, with which this move to online instruction is expected to happen is un unprecedented at the moment and staggering. So a lot of times we find that faculty feel like having to pull the hair out of the hat, um, you know, becoming instructional MacGyvers, having to improvise quick solutions and less than ideal, under less than ideal circumstances. Um, and it doesn't matter what the ideal solution is, um, because there are a lot of clever solutions out there, many instructors will understandably find this process stressful, and McGraw Education is here to help you. So the purpose of today's session is really to provide you with some in insights into our leading digital uh, teaching and learning platforms, um, but more so how it can be utilized to easily and effectively um, help you to transition your courses and your coursework online, aligned, obviously, to ensure ultimate student success. Um, and we, we hope we'll be able to cover all of that for you in today's session, um, but feel free to, to ask, and, you know, ask the questions and reach out to us um, if anything was not covered and you, you have some questions uh, around any of the topics or, or the discussions that we'll be having. Thank you so much, Sirish. Wonderful. I think it's over to me, so I'm just going to share my slides and Madeline, I'm going to ask you to come on video just for one second so you can give me a thumbs up if I'm correctly showing my PowerPoint. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you very much. Now, before I kick off, I just want to say you've just said something that's just absolutely touched my heart is that instructional MacGyvers and my goodness, isn't that what's happening to everybody at the moment? We're being asked to um, suddenly learn lots of new technology and do all these things. But um, out of all of this, I think has come. And in fact, I was speaking about this last night with an instructor, some incredible um, innovation from people and uh, quick ways of working out how they can um, be very successful um, in the online environment. So thank you both. Um, I'm here just very quickly um, ahead of our fantastic speakers to talk to you about some of the tips and tricks uh, that we can offer you in terms of moving your course online quite quickly. So one of my roles is working with instructors across international to help them to, to get online quickly um, and to make sure that that's a very effective course for their student. Um, and to help shoulder the load, as Madeline said, that's what we're here for, to help you transition quickly and, and to really be a partner to you in making sure that we iron out any issues and, and make sure that you are as successful as possible. So what I'm going to do uh, in this brief session is just um, look at how we can move online quickly and efficiently to bring about that student success as well as your own in recognising um, how we translate your course into an online um, and effective environment. I know some of you might not be familiar with the Connect platform, so I'll spend just a minute or so uh, talking about what that is. A little bit about how McGraw-Hill has really invested in uh, creating an adaptive core which helps to ensure students are most effective, um, which supports your teaching and helps you to have more meaningful, um, I'll put that in inverted commas, face-to-face -face time, whatever that does look like. 
I'm going to run over a couple of keys to success in designing your online course and a few tips and tricks. And I know that later in the session, both um, Mark and Alex will be talking about how to put this in practice, how they've successfully done that, how to hold students accountable for their online learning experience and the value that they have received from them. So very quickly, what is Connect? Well, Connect is a um, an online uh, resource centre or online learning um, area where we can connect directly and seamlessly with your learning management system. We don't want anyone to have to worry about different passwords. We want you to be able to take our curated resources and pop those straight into your LMS where you find that powerful. So this is uh, an environment which normally would host an adaptive reading or study, uh, which we call SmartBook, um, as well as uh, an e-book which students can use uh, offline or on their mobile. And what we've really focused on as a company is um, creating personalised materials through our adaptive that enhance the student experience, that give them continuous feedback, even when we're not there to give them that feedback, that make them more effective in their study time. So what we always say is no matter how long they spend studying, we want to make that the most impactful minutes, hours, however long they're spending. And so that's what we've been really transforming ourselves into as a company. We see ourselves as partners. We are not the solution. We um, are effective only uh, when used by fantastic faculty to deliver, you know, an engaging uh, in a course and environment. We have lots of functionality, including auto-graded assignments to help you save time and some reporting and insights um, that can help you to really drill down even to the learning outcome that your students are struggling with. And I believe that Mark is going to look at that in his presentation shortly. Um, so when we think about Connect, I think it's got you know, an adaptive core that we can use to help our students be successful and cover those lower level blooms concepts, sort of understanding and remembering, to come to class more prepared We've got curated resources for high and low stakes assessment, got that offline reading and study experience, and the data and analytics to help drive student performance. And what we like to think about Connect as being is kind of like having a consistent, constant tutor who can work alongside your students when you're not there, giving them resources just at the time that they need them and helping them to develop those key skills. I think it's important to just mention to you um, so that you're aware you can really rely on Connect. We have 99.9999 uh, something six, I think, percent uptime um, and an industry leading level of cyber security. We're pretty keen on making sure that everything that you house in there, your students, their data, everything is uh, as secure as possible um, so that you can feel confident uh, in using our technology. So in terms of Connect as an environment, we really think about that as a way to help you be effective um, and to free up some of your time in course delivery um, and helping your students to reach the outcomes that they need and that you need for them. So hopefully that makes sense. Anything I say in this session uh, may actually be useful to you after you've heard from, from our faculty experts. Um, and I know that they will be sharing the slides uh, and presentation with you afterwards. So very quickly, I've mentioned that we have an adaptive core, and I wanted to pull out a couple of uh, pieces of theory, not too much, I know it's very early in the morning, um, but basically we've created an adaptive study experience called SmartBook, and what we've done is we've uh, understood some of the key learning theory, and we've put that into the platform to help students be as effective as possible when they're studying. So things like we know that after a certain period of time, students are going to start to forget what they've been reading. So we've designed algorithms within this platform that can help students by bringing back the material that they're about to forget and helping them to study that again by engaging in deliberate practice. So doing things over and over so that they are able to commit those to long term memory. Things like how is the most effective way to help students learn? Sometimes it's putting different concepts together. So things like spaced practice, when is the right time to be learning? 
um, different pieces of information and how would we be most effective with that. And of course, there is a focus on metacognitive theory, which is helping students to understand what they know and what they don't know so that they will know what to focus on when it comes to exam time. And for you, that means that you're able to see, do I have overconfident students, underconfident students? And that really helps you with remediation. So I'm not gonna do much more on this, but as I mentioned, it's an adaptive study experience. So it combines the key concepts or the textbook along with some simple questions. Um, and this is very cleverly designed to make students um, read more than they normally would. Um, and these questions pop up at the time that the system determines that they should, in fact, be putting some of that stuff to long-term memory. So highly personalized, no student is receiving the same questions in the same order, or even the same questions, because it helps your more knowledgeable students move through very quickly, and those who need extra time to pass through a little more slowly and be given learning resources to help them. Fun fact for this morning, it even knows when you're getting frustrated. So if you um, just are starting to lose focus and answering you know, things any which way, the system will look for up to four questions that it knows that you know the answer to and bring those back to help you try and get your confidence level back. Right, so on to what can help us to very quickly design a course that's going to be the most effective. There are four main elements that I see, and that is time on task, support functions, structure of the course, and the feedback that we're able to give our students. So in terms of that, um, the basics of how you could design something very quickly and effectively, be consistent with your naming conventions on the weekly activities and echo the syllabus or your course outline uh, in what you prepare and connect. And that helps students to make a seamless connection between what you're talking about in the learning management system and what they're studying in Connect. And you can see an example here. Uh, many of our Connect products actually contain um, an online, um, preparing for online module that you can also include. So that's a great thing to do. And I always stress guide student behavior with the naming convention of your activities. So we always say that adaptive learning is best before class, can be used other ways. So we would normally call that pre-class study. And just trying to guide students that it's important to read before they come to class. Obvious, but many students don't do that. And then similarly, a really good and easy structure is to simply have your pre-class study and a post-class quiz. Um, and they will understand if you repeat that each week, that's the sequence. Do your reading and study before, do your quiz um, and testing and practice afterwards. So uh, another key recommendation that works well for instructors that I work with is starting with a session zero, which is where you put some um, materials to help students learn how to use Connect and also where to go to get help. Obviously, we would recommend you also put those in your learning management system in case there's um, an issue with student access. But giving them that gives them that security that they know where these resources are and they can go and get help at any time. There's multiple um, help areas set within Connect. I think there's around four. So we try to really highlight where students can go to take the emphasis off you if they've forgotten their password, for example. Oops. Okay, and the heaviest I'm going to get with theory this morning, given that it is early, is just um, thinking about the way that we structure the course. There's a, a really key theory that I like to talk about, and that is um, cognitive load theory. And intrinsic cognitive load is the difficulty of the material that you're setting itself, which is sort of predetermined in many ways by the course and the outcomes. Extrinsic cognitive load is um, something that we have more control over, and that's how the material is presented. So in keeping that very consistent naming structure and often the types of activities that you offer within Connect, you can really reduce some of that load. If you think about what happens when you go onto a website and you just are confronted with so much information, you're not sure where to click or where to go, that's a great example of what happens. Um, 
when the cognitive load is exceeding our processing capacity. So we struggle to complete the activity successfully. And here we're just trying to reduce frustration and disengagement from the student. So we can really control that, as I mentioned, with the course structures and the naming conventions. It sounds simple. I've worked with hundreds of academics and I can see the difference when things are laid out very clearly um, and when they're just kind of, you know, ad hoc. It makes a big difference to guiding students through. So we want to provide students with a framework that guides and supports their learning and we can do that through Connect. We can provide ways for students um, to connect their current knowledge with their prior knowledge. Uh, and I suggest we do that through very quick instructions to add to each of the activities. And my cheat is to simply write a set of instructions, a couple of lines, and then copy and paste and tweak them as you need to throughout the course. And of course, we're here to help you with that. And being explicit with students about how new topics will link back with the previous ones um, and how it's something that they're doing may help with a future activity. And that I would suggest, as I've mentioned, would be through instructions that we would add. So you can just simply set anything and connect without instructions. Um, and this is where I think it's really important to mention that signposting is just critical in your online experience. And I've given you an example there. So you just want to tell the students why, what's in it for me? Why would I do this? How long would it take me? What am I going to learn? And how will I be learning this? Is it a video? Is it questions? That sort of thing. And that helps students to be able to make an adult decision about whether they want to start something now, uh, whether they've got time to do it, that kind of thing. And I think something that's really critical is that there is the ability to reinforce your key messages. Uh, we do have within Connect uh, Tegrity, which you can use free to make short videos to reinforce your key concepts, or you could use your own lecture capture. Key to what we do within Connect is assign things to students and make them visible. And we have some excellent feedback or policy options that can really take your course to the next level uh, with the online learning. So if you're giving things like full feedback after every question, that can help to keep students engaged if it's for low stakes. Or you might want to provide full feedback and solutions each time they complete a quiz and then give them multiple options to practice that and letting them know. And then you can really start to increase your online engagement with students um, and get them coming back into the system and using those materials. If we delay the feedback, as you would know, sometimes that can disrupt the learning process. As I mentioned, at the heart of everything is SmartBook, which provides instant feedback to students. So uh, even if you don't want to do that with the quiz or anything else that you set, know that students will be getting that continuous feedback and remediation through their use of SmartBook. Something that not everyone knows is that Check My Work and Handy Hints are often available in different disciplines, and that can be great for students as well. Sometimes there are even guided examples so that they can see how something should be worked before they have a go. Time on task is so critical to putting together an online course and the temptation is often to pick lots of resources. Um, try to calculate how long you want students to spend online. Um, here's a general rule, multiple choice could take between one and two minutes depending on complexity. We have some filters in our question banks that will help you to see how long something might take because you can filter on different blooms levels and level of difficulty. You can always calculate if you don't know uh, how long it would take to do something by uh, timing yourself and multiplying by three. With adaptive study, the SmartBook, try to set that uh, slider bar a little bit lower because we need to remember that there is reading time in addition to the question time, which is the only thing that's calculated on the slider bar. So we want to keep that an engaging uh, resource for students to use um, and know that you will still get excellent coverage from the questions, even at a lower time limit. So I'm not going to run through all of these, but I do want them to be available for you on the slides when we circulate those later. This is um, from some of our very experienced <clears throat> excuse me, faculty uh, across international. These are the ways that they quickly transform things online replacing lectures, reinforcing lectures, 
replacing in-class activities and um, how to assess students. So they're just some tips and tricks that um, I wanted to share with you. And a couple more, and I'm almost done. Participation. Use the question bank within Connect to create polling questions using Zoom, and that creates a lot of engagement. For active learning, you can use chapter cases or worked examples and then get students into a breakout room. To reinforce, you can use end of chapter questions to work through in your face-to-face -face time. You can deliver pre-exam drills to make sure that your students are ready and that keeps them very engaged in the online resources. And for high stakes assessment, please feel free to reach out to any of your consultants because we have um, a proctoring or lockdown functionality available that will help to make, um, help to reduce cheating and really help you to know uh, who is taking the exam. So I've just been given a uh, hurry up please message from my lovely colleagues. So this is the key thing that I wanted to share with you. Communication, when you're going online, communication is critical. Give your students a roadmap about the changes. Let them know if it's your first time with the technology. They'll be a lot more, um, hopefully, uh, kind to you in terms of how the course goes and their own reactions. And take their feedback. Tell them that you're developing that course together online and that their feedback is, is useful. Start as simply as you can. As I've mentioned, maybe just two things a week, pre and post class activities. It's a new world for you and your students. Less is more. Be wary of that course and a half, which very often happens in blended learning, which is where you kind of put together too many materials. Um, you can always tweak things along the way. Go easy on yourself. Assigning points to any of the online uh, work will be critical for engagement. And my final message is we are really here to help you. We have fully developed courses we can share with you that you can tweak that have been created by learning designers. We've got support sites, videos, implementation guides, and of course, your wonderful uh, team in South Africa. So thank you so much for your time, and I'm looking forward to hearing from um, the next two presenters. Thanks, Mona, which is all very interesting. And I love how you mentioned the student learning aspect, where Connect knows what this student knows and can focus on topics that need practice and understanding, especially when the students get frustrated. Um, and, you know, student engagement definitely is key in the current situation anyway. We do have a question for you, Moina, if you can cover that, please. It's, can connect classes be self-paced or scheduled? Uh, as in, I'm going to just try and clarify that. Does that mean without instructor intervention? Um, uh, I don't think it does mean that, but uh, yes. No, thanks. I don't think so. I, I just mean, I think it means, yes, exactly. It means like, it, can it be self-paced and scheduled with the, with the instructor? Absolutely. You can set the material to be due at any time. You can allow for late submissions. Um, I, I do recommend having things that are due, um, you know, at the time that you'd like them to be done because there is a to-do list or a calendar that prompts students and it's the first thing that they see. Um, however, you can allow students to study at their own pace, and there's an awful lot of material in there that they can access themselves um, in terms of self-study, including um, a recharge or review functionality with the with the adaptive. So it, you can really keep them engaged and let them learn at their own pace. Perfect. Thank you, Mona. Thank you for highlighting the fun, fantastic features for effective learning and also sharing the best practices of online teaching. Uh, we will now hear from Mark, uh, who's a lecturer at Cape, Cape Peninsula University of Technology. Over to you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Suresh. And um, I certainly hope you can hear me. I have my video on as well. I may uh, stop that every now and then. Um, but yes, thanks to the McGraw Hill team for allowing us to for allowing us to share some of our experiences. And I can only really endorse. Uh, what Maureen has, has said, um, you know, it's always interesting when you get uh, uh, publishers or suppliers selling their product to you, you sit and listen with uh, a sort of intensity, but you, you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And quite honestly, um, <laughs> it, it, it's quite amazing that um, what, what has been said thus far uh, is, is entirely true. Um, so again, I'd like to, um, if you can just get my presentation up, Suresh, I'm not sure if it's, um, 
So you should be able to change your slide. Okay, I'll, I'll change it. Um, okay, that mine's, mine's not. Oh, there we go. Okay. Thank you. Um, folks, yeah, let's connect is simple in its functionality and its platform implementation. There is absolutely nothing complicated about it. And, and the concept of 48 hours is, is easily achievable. However, there are certain challenges that, I, that we experience. Um, and the first one, and, and, and maybe not challenges, but, but certain lookout points that you need to be aware of. And the first one is senior management commitment. Um, that's at faculty level or at the Senate level or wherever, wherever. The senior management needs to buy into this process because, because it is a fundamental shift in the way teaching and learning is conducted. Um, and there's possibly some, some financial implications. But having said that, once you've overcome that and you've got the buy-in, the next part of the process I found to be particularly important was you have to have a project champion. Now, the project champion can either be your subject coordinator or, or the subject lecturer or facilitator, but, but there has to be someone that takes ownership that allows the interaction with the Connect team in, the, in, in terms of the in implementation and also with the, the, the champion having the knowledge to assist fellow colleagues because otherwise um, it, it, it needs to be channeled. Then one of the other challenges, and I suppose this is not unique to education, but, um, but you've got facilitators and, and there's a slight, slight change here. I've found that I'm not lecturing so much as I'm facilitating, um, but you have a facilitator resistance to change. That old concept of I've been working for the last 10 years doing it this way and why must I change? Uh, you know, that whole, that, that, that needs to be addressed and it needs to be understood. Then, of course, once the decision is made that Connect is the option, you have to choose very carefully your course, the course that you are going to, that you are going to offer your students is extremely important. And this is where the relearning by your facilitators and your subject lecturers becomes crucial because they literally have to go back to school. So it has nothing to do with how simple the platform is and how simple the, the, the implementation is. It has to do with selecting the correct course and your facilitators relearning. What I found integral was make sure that uh, platform, or whatever learning management system you're running, the two have to integrate. Be very careful not to run two different systems. Um, Connect has the opportunity for you to log in via their platform separately. We happen to use Blackboard and we've integrated Connect and it works really well with Blackboard so that the student only sees one system. And I'll touch briefly on that now with a few screenshots. So, so the folders are consistent. So what they see in, in uh, Connect they see in, in Blackboard or they see in the LMS system. Uh, make sure when you register, you register the students, your students on Connect, make sure it's consistent. We, we were advised to use the CPUT email addresses, so student number, email address, and that brings consistency because again, if you're not going to be consistent and you're going to allow students to register with a Gmail address, you start losing the total uh, complete system and, and in a way you start losing, it starts creating different systems, which is what you don't want. Um, importantly, student resources. Now, clearly it's an issue. You know, you have to have access to some form of either a mobile device or laptop. It works particularly um, well with, with laptop functionality, obviously, but nothing stops students from using iPads and all sorts of things like that. Um, there are some, there are obviously some limitations, but, but student resources is crucial in this. And we found a way to overcome that. You know, a lot of our students initially when we started um, the beginning of the year, by the way, we've been on this project for about two years and it's only this year that we have really, really rolled it out fully thanks to COVID. So, so in a way, there was some good that came out of this. 
um, your course that you select must tie up to your learning outcome. And another aspect that is, and, and again, I don't, I don't think we need to, we need to debate that. Um, choose your course carefully. That's why you need your product champion or your subject champion to take ownership. Moderation is, is easier. All I've done is I've granted access to my external moderator who's at, uh, I think, Nelson Mandela University. And um, he just has access to Blackboard. And he moderates my, he moderates my uh, course up front. So he's moderated everything up front. So there's no need for post-moderation, although it's still a requirement. But, but in essence, once the moderation for the course has taken place up front, you have no issues on the moderation. And that's particularly important when it comes to assessment. And, and again, um, this is slightly small, but, but you, can see, you can see I've got about eight courses that I run. And each course, each course has to be set up at the implementation phase correctly. And I think that's absolutely crucial. This little screen is a little bit small, but, but having said that, this was just to show you that it's simple to set up once you have chosen the course. And what I've done here is, as I say, you can have multiple courses linked to, to your particular program. Then once you've chosen the course, it's extremely important to set up um, to set up, and I suppose you can expand the screen if you want to, but you, it's extremely important to set up your lessons accordingly. So you can see I've created my lessons per, not per time scale as such, but per week. Okay, and then just to the right, you can see there's ebook, and uh, there's the LS on the bottom is the Learn Smart. And I cannot emphasize enough that you have all the resources available to the student in one screen. Okay, so, so you've got ebook. I mean, we've found, that, uh, we've found that the financial benefits in implementing this program far exceed just the cost of one book or one, one literature, one prescribed piece of literature, which uh, students invariably don't buy anyway. So the setup, the setup of your course the creation of your lessons in advance. I created my lessons for the whole year. And yes, you can manage it and we'll come to that. But it gave the student complete transparency as to what's expected. And of course, it all ties up to your learning outcome. I touched that it needs to, you need to make sure that whatever you replicate or whatever you create in terms of your course, and I'll go back to the previous screen, is replicated exactly in your learning management system. So there you can see we started on budget, for example, which was uh, lesson one, okay, and there is budget lesson one, and all the students happen to do is go through the learning management system because Connect or the McGraw-Hill system is only part of the learning management system. So what we didn't want to do was to have a separate uh, logging process, as it were, or a separate browser that we needed to that we needed to engage. We just wanted to have the student click on budget, take them to the work for that particular lesson. Okay, this is this is quite an amazing feature when you think about it. And and again, it's there. Those little bar graphs on the right is just telling me at a very when I prepare for the lesson or when my students log in, I share with them their performance. So they can see the, the work that I've created, whether it's assignments, quizzes, exams, or uh, um, any form of homework, they can see, they can see exactly um, their performance for the week. Now what I did was, what I used to do, or what I do do, shall I say, is um, I create assignments per week and I have them do I have them due on a Sunday evening and I make sure that they count for marks. Now that's extremely important because the, the shift in ownership, the shift in, in responsibility has just been phenomenal where the student and the engagement that our students are, are performing at the moment has been, has been unheralded to, to say the least. The sense of ownership they have taken responsibility. So you, you've had this 
you've had this shift, and that's why I say you don't be, you, you move away from lecturing, you become a facilitator because your student takes responsibility for their academic progress. So, and and again, you can see here the learn smart functionality is one part of is one part of the offering or part of the platform. So you can see there, any of these assignments, these are assignments that I created with due dates. They are due every week per, per Sunday, and they vary in time. Um, you, you obviously assess how much time you want your students to spend on interactive adaptive assignments, and also you want to allow them the opportunity to practice. So I created two types of assignments, and I mean they're multiple. They're multiple opportunities. I use Learn Smart, which is obviously your, your adaptive interaction, and I use practice questions. So, so the resources available to them is, uh, is, is, is truly great. On the, on the Learn Smart side of things, and this is what I found to be, be particularly useful, is that I would set up a, I always used to struggle with face-to-face -face kind of in class. I would stand up and I would talk and talk, and uh, you wouldn't know which students you've lost. You, you actually got no idea, and then you do, you may do a, uh, an assignment or a project, and when it comes to the exam six, seven weeks later, or the test, class test, or whatever the case may be, or assessment, you actually don't know which students are with you or not. With the Learn Smart Interactive Adaptive Platform, the students are taken immediately to their level of embedded knowledge. And that has, has had phenomenal results. And, and I'll touch on the results. But the interesting nature of how the student engages um, artificially with this artificial intelligence is truly great. Yes, I manage the date. Um, you know, this is, what, this is what's truly great. It takes out all the emotion. There's, none, there's no emotion attached to anything. All the rules are explained up front. The student amazingly takes responsibility and you can manage not only the entirety of your course by date, but you can manage each individual student by date, depending on their circumstances. And obviously that's quite real in the current time. So, so you spend a lot of time managing the process. Okay, what does the student see? And, and again, this is just a screen that shows the various multimodal uh, offerings that that Connect has, for example, you've got videos and you've got Learn Smart and you've got quizzes and you've got you've got all of and and course material. We can upload we can upload any course material that we want to. Uh, so so really, the interaction that the student has with this platform, I've found to be to be really, really useful, which I couldn't do face to face. I couldn't provide sufficient resources um, available that, that are available on 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 Connect. Again, um, you know, it's all it's all good and well. So, so how do we how do we interact? How do we engage? Every and, and this is just part of my technique. Before I start the lesson, I would I would feedback the performance that, uh, that I've been monitoring during the week. And immediately, I can see which students are at risk, which, are, which students are safe. And I engage the students that are at risk, I engage immediately. So they get an email, they may get an SMS to say that you're act we are monitoring your activity, for example, and we're finding that in order to ensure or in order to prevent possible uh, possibly, possibly you being at risk is to, is, to, is to make contact. So that's on an individual basis. And this high graph, the, the visibility is quite astounding. So obviously don't share all the, the students that are at risk their names, but it's quite interesting to see how the dynamics of this pie graph changes as you progress and as the students start understanding how to use Connect effectively. Then I can, I can go straight into each individual student and I look at their performance. Now, again, one of the, one of the learnings this year for, for us has been that we only used LearnSmart, he has a little bit of a tip, but we only used LearnSmart 
as part of our progressive weighting or part of our progressive mark calculation. Um, from next year, though, we will use all assignments that were created, whether they were practice assignments, homework assignments, quiz assignments, or learn smart assignments, I do believe you need to include those in, in your weighting or portion of your progressive mark for the year. And simply because it ensures continuous engagement. You must remember that Connect has a 24 hour, 365 days a year reach. Whereas when you're doing face to face, it's not possible. Um, it's not possible to make up the lessons that a student chose not to attend face to face. And that's why we have to move to a hybrid or a high flex situation where, yes, we'll go back to face to face. But it's so important that I'm in a position to stream my lectures live and record them and post them on, on the LMS system utilizing the Connect platform. In conclusion, folks, um, and, and the, this, this hits home hard only really when you implement the system. It is, it is an artificial intelligent, intelligent or integrated system per student. Now that, that's extremely important. You have immediate intervention per student. You have, it's multimodal. You have videos, you have assignments, you have quizzes, you have homework, um, and it's continuous in integration. I found that uh, there's, a, there's a, a change from lecturing to facilitating. Now, it's interesting. I touched on uh, lecturers need to change their approach a little bit um, and engage what's on offer, but they have to go back to school. You've got to go and relearn everything that you thought you knew in terms of the content, because you must never forget that you still have to, you still have to engage and you're still going to be asked questions. So you literally have to go and restudy that whole course. And of course, that's, that, that takes time and it's, and it's challenging. But once you have that embedded knowledge, um, it, 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 it's just amazing how it works. Okay, yeah, you know, I don't know if we'll ever overcome this, but, but the, the course is such that it scaffolds from day one. And it's synonymous with the way the individual courses, and I can only talk on financial management and investment analysis, but the way the professors have constructed the ebook scaffold from your learning objectives at the very start of the, of the chapters, for example, right through to the assessment. Everything is part of the building block. So what that means is, what that means is that the embedded knowledge sits. It, 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 it really, it stays with the student, which is something that I've, I've, I've been taking particular attention to. Whether that will ever happen, we don't know. But, but at the end of the day, if you are running, if you are running a, a platform and you are running a course, why are we having a November exam for three hours? For example, that's a question. It's a continuous transfer of knowledge. And, and again, I have found a major shift in how students accept academic responsibility. It's always been, it's a, a historically, okay, due to a number of reasons, whatever those reasons may be. Historically, there's always been this, well, I don't need to do much possibly to pass the year. It's someone else's responsibility. With, with Connect, I found, and the multimodalness of the offering, I have found that the students accept academic responsibility. So I thank you folks. If there are any questions, I'm sure they'll get answered. I'm, I'm, I'm contactable on uh, at CPUT. Uh, I can help anybody if required, or through Michelle, you, she's got my contact details. Um, I, will, I will help anybody where, wherever needed. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. You highlighted a very important point about being the facilitator and about you know changing the approach towards artificial intelligence, especially in this current time, and about not being reluctant towards it. So uh, that's a very good point. Thanks. I, I also, there's a question for you. Uh, is it okay if I can check that out with you? 
Yeah, that's fine. I see the question is around dishonesty. What Great. I have what I have found is that um, with the proctoring facility, whether you're using whether you're using Respondus Lockdown Browser or monitoring, or whether you're using Connect proctoring, uh, uh, the, the the difference between the two fundamentally do the same, perform the same function. The phenomenalness, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but the real phenomenal aspect of uh, Connect proctoring is that it records the screen, whereas Lockdown Browser, for example, in Blackboard doesn't do that. Yes, you can monitor. Now, what I've found is that on the monitoring side, students come at me and they say, we don't have cameras, which I know is not particularly true. Um, we don't have cameras on our laptops, et cetera. So, and, and, and the monitoring in, in both systems comes at a, at a cost, extra cost. But having said that, I have experienced no um, integrity issues on any of my assessments, purely because the way I construct them, construct them, the database of questions that's available on Connect runs into the thousands. So I've just recently, I've just recently done all my assessments online. And um, I, for example, have a three hour 70 question multiple choice exam out of 120 marks. And um, I have a thousand questions and I ask 70 questions and they are randomized. So the questions are randomized, the answers are randomized. Okay. So I, I, I've seen that it's not, it's, it, it, there, is no, there are no integrity issues. So in, in essence, to answer your question, um, the dishonesty has been mitigated again. Thanks, Mark. Is it okay if I can read out the questions for you because that way our audience will be able to know what the question is? Sure, no problem. Excellent. So there's one question that says, how long did it take for you to set up the course? It seems like this was very comprehensive. Yeah, the, the, there are two aspects to it. It took me, I've been doing this, I started last year just on my financial management for part-time course. The, the, actual, the actual implementation or the actual platform is quick. That's, oh, uh, McGraw-Hill McGraw -Hill are just brilliant. Uh, 24 hours and you've got your course. The, the actual implementation planning of your course takes time. So, so the, 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 the McGraw Hill side of things is, it's just phenomenal how quickly they have, uh, they, can, they can give you access to your course. The, the trick comes in in the planning. Make sure that you've got your product champion, make sure that you know which course, uh, you've got your course, and then set up your, I, I captured all 500 of my students manually along with some of my other colleagues, because I wanted it done correctly. So again, it took maybe a week or so to get the course set up. That's not the implementation, that's the actual course set up, mm -hmm. registering all the students, and then we were ready to go. But, but, and then of course you're learning, you have to go and study your, your course. Take the ebook, take the literature, and uh, study the course so that you can um, you can present it accordingly. So I hope that answers your question. It doesn't take a long time. Brilliant. Thanks, Mark. One last question before we move on, and we can cover the rest of them in our Q and A. It says, "Does Connect reports help you get an overview of how your class is doing and where they are at any given time? Do you use the reports to align your contact sessions?" Yes, um, I I tend to use the reports in the background mm -hmm. and I tend to use the, the bar charts or the pie charts I tend to use in my class quite extensively. I think the, the report the reports are available uh, immediately. In other words, they are it's it's not it's not two or three sort of days or weeks later. It it's immediate. I can see the interaction that the student has with connect, I can see immediately. So whenever I'm challenged, I just call up the interaction, whether I call it up on my uh, learner management system because the two talk to each other, or whether I call it up and connect, it immediately, it, it, the student immediately has to take a step back and say, uh oh, um, I'm being, you know, I'm, I'm being, I'm being sort of assessed continuously. I'd like to, I'd like to add, so I hope that answers the question, but I'd like to add just in finality, if, there if there aren't any more questions, is I had, um, I've just recently done my assessment and across the various uh, finance two and finance four, I had a 15% improvement in my results 
from my July, my June test to my September test. I had a 10% improvement in my results um, from, uh, in, 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 another, in another course from, from June to July. And I had a 92% attendance on my exam. So in other words, 92% of my students wrote the exam. That is remotely. So that whole argument of, of yeah, we don't have this, we don't have that. What Connect allows you, if, if someone says to you, I don't, have, I don't have a laptop today, then you say, no problem, do it tomorrow, nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Please go and borrow one or go into campus or do it off your um, iPad. And immediately they realize that, wait a minute, I can't take too many chances because, because so the performance is, is starting to come through. Anything else, uh, Therese? Thank you. Thank you so much. I guess that's it. But thank you so much for sharing your tips for teaching online along with your experience of using Connect. Thanks a lot. We'll cover the question answers, the rest of them in our Q&A session. Now let's pass over to Alex, who's the head of business management department at University of Petrolia. Petrolia, sorry. Over to you, Alex. You should be able to share your screen and share the slides. Can't hear you. Thank you. Good morning. Can you all hear me? Perfect. Okay. I'm just sharing my screen. No worries. Um, if you can't hear me or there, there's noise or something, um, it's, it happens to be our garden day at the university. One is busy working in the garden, so please excuse that background noise. Um, I, I think I'll give you a bit of a background and context and how we've, we've co-created with, with McGraw Hill as one of our strategic partners and suppliers in the learning environment, teaching environment. And we, we are experiencing COVID, almost post-COVID, hopefully, as, as the normal, because we were prepared for this by accident. And I'll quickly explain to you why and what. Sorry. So our department is, is one of those mega departments, and I don't want to bore you with anything, because if you think business management, those who studied that will, will think, oh, my goodness, that was boring. It's textbook-based. It's PowerPoint-based. We currently service uh, 10,200 students and the grads um, over a year, and our offerings ranges from entrepreneurship to supply chain, communication management, um, basic general management strategy, international management, turnaround, and leadership. And um, so it's a very comprehensive offering, and um, we combine three basic principles. That's managerial, it's entrepreneurial, and it's leadership. So everything we do embrace those three principles in, in all those offerings. So we also attempt to create knowledge, we do. We also distribute knowledge, we, we into skills development, they must be able to do it, they must be work ready, and also everything we do is very entrepreneurial. In, in terms of their thinking. So innovation is embedded in that, creativity is embedded in that, opportunity finding and so on. But well, as you all know, we have this big problem of disengagement. We had that about six, seven years ago, and before that as well, you sit with a 600 class, C class, 400 to 600, and there's just very little learning taking place. And that was the history of this subject specifically, or this module, all these modules. So students don't attend, or when they attend, they sit and do what you see there. I think nowadays it's all about doing social media and class, but that was our major issue. So we went through an entire process of revamping and re-understanding teaching and, and also learning, and found that the teaching styles available is not matching the learning style. So that was the first um, component we've identified. Also, we, we sat with this real and deeper dilemma of disengagement classrooms in terms of the learning matter and the teaching methods, and also curriculum transformation. So that's something we've addressed from the start. Um, also, the aspect of innovation. These courses remain the same for decades in terms of the outcomes, in terms of the content as well. So we've addressed that by means of curiosity, the basics of creativity, started investigating everything, re restructuring everything based on the end user. So the principles of, of user experience uh, drove this whole rethinking of business management, and we found that there's no generic end user. There's, there's a new challenge. Um, these students are, are generation me, but also they're very into social and team-oriented kind of action and group work. 
They also collaborate, they like cooperation, the cooperative kind of exercises and cases. They tech savvy more than my lecturers, I think some of them. Um, they love simplicity, user experience, and as the research showed, they also like printed books, like the majority of them, which was quite a shock for us because we went but totally e electronic five, six years ago and found that the majority of them want printed books. We also offer that to them. And they don't like reading at all. Um, we all know that. So a lot of them didn't even buy uh, textbooks. They copied the chapters, which was illegal in any case. And a textbook was, was just there for those who really want to do well. And they can get um, summarized notes and things from, from peers. They're very visual. They don't like class attendance because it's boring to use a scientific term there. Um, and the learning is different. We have to find, we found a new way, um, understanding the new way of learning and how they study. And they like research and they want meaning. So they just don't want PowerPoint anymore. They want a lecturer, facilitator, that was mentioned by the previous presenter, that is facilitating meaning and facilitating content and context and bringing business to, to the classroom, which is the context of, of the subject or these subjects. So we, we found that our integrated solution, and this is about six years ago, was to have a student-centered teaching and learning method. They, we want to include some instruction outside of the class, bring business to the classroom, create some reality and frame of reference by means of technology. And interactive group learning activity in class with the challenge of uh, 2,800 first years or 1,000 second years or 1,000 third years. So that was a big challenge, but we need to look at group dynamics because that's the world of work and the new future skills they need to be able to work effectively. And based on that, the following principles were, were stipulated, and it's all about active learning, problem-based learning, all of those things that, that look like a cliche, but we've incorporated that in our design thinking. And then we started co-creating with McGraw-Hill um, via the Connect platform, and we worked together on scale. So that was very important for us to start with a big group, a third year strategic management group, and then started with a seamless integration from first to third years. Understanding Connect and Learn Smart and all the other nice apps and things they use, and in order to apply uh, the learning principles and teaching principles we've identified before this process, so it comes quite a, a long time. And what we like about the McGraw-Hill um, partnership is that the basic principles of learning do not change. Right, so it addresses all the aspects we've identified before: active learning collaboration, prior knowledge, problem solving, and the rest. And that was a basic and very good synergy with, in terms of our intent. Um, so the content, we had a look at that with McGraw. We want um, contextualized and, and South African kind of cases linked to the best textbooks in the world. That's very important. Our standards of quality is number one. We're busy in the process to, to acquire AACSB accreditation, and that's very important for us, the quality and the level assessment and so on and also the teaching and the assessments, which is always a challenge. So based on, on McGraw-Hill's model, we sort of um, integrated that with our model. Um, in terms of our content, we developed new textbooks by including the best chapters in the world and also contextualizing that to South African and African context in terms of case and understanding. Adaptive reading was it's a total winner. It's been a total winner. These students started reading because they have to. And they did not like that at all, especially on the third year level. We, we did a bit of a snapshot research there, and they didn't like the fact that they have to read now. But if you look at the final grades, uh, it really helped and assisted in enhancing our pass rates and so on. Assessments changed the whole scenario, but totally. Um, new ways of assessment, formative and summative, and it all, all worked together in, in terms of the main objective of of learning engagement, learning centeredness, which is the core, and alignment. So in terms of what happened in COVID, and, and was accidental, I would say, although very scientific, the process, and, and very good lecturers driving this, um, is quite a seamless integration. So you, you speak about the 48-hour turnaround. We were ready for that. Um, all our, especially our first-year lecturers, already do flip classroom kind of things for years for five years now. Um, we already have online um, assessments right through from summative, uh, from formative to um, summative. And at the end, our first semester COVID, we were all worried about pass rate, but all my connect modules 
um, adding a pass rate above 85%, and the average, um, uh, sorry, below 65%, not above. Um, so the standard was quite good. Uh, we had very little issues with um, integrity and dishonesty, like what the previous um, um, presenter mentioned, and that was good for us. That was the big worry. In certain subjects with a lot of calculations and quantitative analysis, um, we found a number of groups working together that had the same answers and ways, ways of, of doing that. So Procter is the answer to that, and we'll definitely apply it from here. But in general, we're very happy because we were ready for this. Um, Connect helped, but totally in addressing all the issues. I, we've done a bit of feedback in terms of the users and, and how they found the experience of it's like teaching and learning and the continuation from March till now. And the following were, were provided. The first is adaptive reading. That stands out as, as for us the number one. We got our students to read. It also enabled my facilitators to engage in conversation in the virtual, virtual class because they already read the content and now we can chat about it. We can offer examples, we can create more context. And that is something that's, that became very popular from a very unpopular kind of action in the, the, the learning environment. Secondly, the test bank, that helped a lot. It's a very well developed test bank, it saves a lot of time in developing, um, especially formative uh, assessment quizzes, cases, and tests, and the setting up of the test that's normally, you know, very time consuming. Um, that helped a lot because there are so many types of questions on different levels and, and aligning with Bloom's taxonomy, which is very important for us, especially while we pursue with the, the ASSB accreditation process. Also, the technical support, I, I think this must be one of the only suppliers in this, in this world with someone with a doctorate in in education technology, and Dr. Gail Kotze is, is really phenomenal uh, in supporting us on, on technical uh, support, also on, on educational principle kind of support. So she really understands outcomes uh, and how it links to content, and all the facilitators working with her will know that, you know, it's there's an answer within 24 hours and earlier. She's very, very good. And that is part of these co-creation kind of benefits with, with this offering. And also then the assessment. Assessment is always an issue, especially when it's online. And we, we didn't battle with that at all. I've already mentioned uh, taxonomy, Lund's taxonomy. The new simulations, the mini simulations are great. Feedback, very positive. You can make it short and, and it's not a five page MBA kind of, of case study, but it's short and effective. And all these you can link it to a number of learning principles and make a theory real. Um, one example here of feedback is I did my semester test through the platform and the system allowed me to block access to the content for the duration of the test. Now that is a significant contribution in the world of assessment. So that helped a lot um, in order to, to test integrity as well. Integration, as mentioned before, it fully integrates with Gradebook, no extra work, no manual capturing, it worked very well. No issues in, in terms of that. And I can give you a number of examples seven, eight years ago in terms of integration or how we've captured our grades. Um, assessment, I did most, uh, okay, that's already mentioned. And then the apps, the different applications and platforms the students could use to access content, exercises from really enable them to, to work and study. You can work very efficiently on a smartphone, and that's really a plus. That was not the case five, six years ago, especially on, on Blackboard. We, we, the mobile part of it was not that efficient. And if you look at Connect now, um, it's easy to use in a smartphone as well. Reporting, the platform allows for early detection of at-risk students so that uh, our team can address them. It, it offers a lot of inclusivity there, and um, we can work one-on-one, -on -one, especially with our students who battle certain terminology and calculations and cases and so on. So that helped a lot. And then the customer service, it's commendable. Um, um, it's, it's really something I would highlight as, as why we have this partnership. What is happening next year? So that's the big question, and we always have short and long-term planning and medium-term planning, but the post-COVID, I hate the word the new normal. Um, it's, it, what is the normal next year? What's our future? It's very exciting. I think we, we will go back to the flipped classroom. Um, I think nothing compares to, to contact education or contact training. 
Um, our flipped classroom approach, we're ready for that. We have all the recordings already done this year. So deep learning can take place in the classroom. So we can really look at the business and entrepreneurship, and communication management, and supply chain, and bring business to the classroom by means of deeper uh, facilitation and understanding and even assessment. Secondly, um, we have to move from just having a, a rigorous LMS to a real and creating virtual learning environment. That's the exciting part for us, is to create a virtual learning environment. So that's where we bring business to the virtual classroom, or we bring cases there, or we have guest speakers there that stream to, to our 3,000 students, to mention a few things. Then user experience. Um, continuously measure, continuously interact by means of focus group, who is the end user. Next year students will be different um, than this year. So we, we continuously assess the nature of their learning process, the, what they like in terms of reading and, and what's their frame of reference. And we will build our VLE according to, to that specifically. <coughs> Sorry. Then the last one is the whole issue of assessment. That's a continuous process of innovation and especially our summative assessment where essay type of questions are required. And that's a big issue. And that's something we have to continuously work on um, and innovate and recreate. And that's the main challenge for us within this virtual learning is to find the best answer for summative assessment that's online. Not just multiple choice and other forms of assessment, the levels of assessment, but specifically SA type of assessment, and now I'm talking about 3,000 first years, and that's what we're working on currently. So that's the future. Um, it's all, I must say, the future is with MAG at this stage, and we're looking forward to co-create. That's the principle we're applying. It's working very well, and we're looking forward to the future and, and get these students to be work-ready and employable and also self-employable in our case. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for sharing your experience and also about the COVID experience teaching and learning. That was very useful to hear. I do have one question for you, Alex, before we pass on to Medvin. And I know we're very short on time, but let's just take one question. Um, it's directed to you and it says, having such big numbers of students, like in my case, how do you deal with the issues of sharing student solutions, answers, or tests online? This is plagiarism. The online aspect that you've just covered. No, we, we follow, uh, we use Turnitin specifically to make sure that it's uh, original work. So that's at this stage the only measure we apply is Turnitin as far as Blackboard. Thanks. Dolly, you, that's a very good question. And I'm sure Madeline can cover that about proctoring and how we have a, with it, it, it is built within Connect and how you, it's a lockdown browser and there are certain features that you can use within Connect to help plagiarism and everything, but I'm going to quickly not steal the show and pass over to Medlin, who's now going to talk about how can you actually move your course online in 48 hours? Is it possible even? Over to you, Medlin. I can't hear you, sorry. Mute. And then I found the unmute button. Um, thanks, to, thanks, thanks to Mark and, and Alex and um, Morwenna for, for, you know, starting the, the sessions off, giving us a really good introduction, firstly, around Morwenna, showing, you know, how, how do we design learning with technology. I think Mark gave us really practical insights in how he has managed to very efficiently and effectively utilize a, a technology like Connect um, to ultimately deliver these courses online. Um, and then from Alex's point of view, you know, having more of an overarching view from the top, um, as said, um, I think Alex, you mentioned you've got 10,000 students across your, 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 your department. Um, I think most of, almost 85 to 90% of your modules are on the Connect platform and, and how that has enabled you to drive your department to, to digital success. Um, so what I just want to quickly, I know we're running short on time, um, you know, so I'll go through this very quickly. I think, the, the question that everybody now has on their minds is that we've seen this now, we've heard this, but so how does it work? How, how do we actually get you online in 48 hours? Um, I mean, you've heard from instructors, it's quite doable, um, and we make that commitment. So firstly, um, well, I'm going backwards. 
Let me just find the slide. Okay, so firstly, you know, how do we set you up for success? So, we, you know, we mainly work in the four quadrants. Um, you know, we will enhance your teaching and learning experience, as you've heard, and I think most people know the McGraw content. We have award-winning content. Um, we, we have state-of-the-art delivery through, through various technologies, um, you know, use of artificial intelligence, and we have the educational expertise. Um, you know, we, we, we're a global company, so we bring all of that to the table for you. Um, obviously, we have a number of digital solutions, and we're focusing mainly on Connect here for the moment. I mean, we have others. We're having, we're having a discussion with a lot of people on the, on, the, on the call today and others around the Alex, the Math solution, um, and so forth. But, but you know, we, we have the, the ready-made solutions for you, um, so it's not a matter of having to then find them and build them. Um, then we do the implementation and training, and I think that's always been a big part for our instructors is right, you know, we have the content, it sounds brilliant, but, you know, how, how do I implement this in my LMS? So I've seen a few questions around LMS integrations on, on the, the Q&A, and I think we will hopefully get to them before the end of the session. If not, you know, we will um, communicate, you know, all questions and answers out to you. But obviously, we do a seamless integration um, into your existing LMS. Um, we make sure that your faculty are upskilled, trained, um, you have the, 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 the tools and the um, right skills to, to deliver this very easily. It's not difficult to utilize the platform. Um, and then we also obviously work with your students to make sure that your students um, are supported and that they fully know how to use the platform. And then there's the big, the big piece around the reporting and analytics. I know Mark spoke about it. Um, uh, you, you know, something like your, your HOD, like Alex, they get regular reports to have an oversight around what's happening within the department. But we provide you with the either institutional-wide reporting, course-wide reporting, individual reporting. And as Mark mentioned, it's all there with the click of a button. You don't have to wait for a day to have that. You can have it in real time. Now, this is where, you know, we say, well, this is you know, where it happens. So how does it happen in 48 hours? 48 hours is not a long, long time. It's two days, basically. So how do we make the magic happen? And, you know, I've just tried to outline a few steps for you. Is that firstly, you know, you start off with your product selection. So you would, you would decide which of the McGraw Hill products you want to use. Um, then very, very, very quickly, and because we have full integration into all the, the, the leading LMSs, and in South Africa, you know, it's mainly Blackboard, Sakai, Moodle. Um, we, we, don't, we haven't seen many others um, surface, but we have full integration into that. So it literally happens um, sometimes, you know, in the same day or maybe, you know, in, in, in within 24 hours. So we make sure that your course is actually linked to your LMS so that you can seamlessly start delivering your content to your students. Um, then we do a bit of course alignment. Um, so we, you know, we, we always say that, um, if whatever you put on your LMS is not aligned to your learning outcomes and your teaching methodology and your assessment strategy, et cetera, then it's just stuff. Um, so we literally help you to look at, you know, what is your course design like? Um, you know, what type of activities do you deploy to your students? What are you expecting for them to do? What are your learning outcomes? What are your learning goals? And around that, we then set up your assignments. We, we, we guide you and help you to make sure that you actually very quickly, within the click of a few buttons, and I think Mark also touched on it, um, you can literally click and, and put an assignment together that's aligned to your course outline. Then we spend a lot of time with our instructors to do the instructor training, making sure that you're fully on board, you're fully capable to set up these assignments yourself um, and deploy them via your LMS. Then we sit with you once again, and we make sure that your course is now fully set up that it's working. Um, if we do an institutional agreement that licenses are set up at the back end, so your students literally just click into their course and they will be able to register and have access to the full module as well as, as the, 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 the online and the offline ebook. Um, and we deploy it through your, through your LMS. Again, these things, if you've worked with them before, for the people that's on the call and, and have experienced Connect before, it takes like five minutes to do this, to do the course deployment to your LMS. And then we, we really want to make sure that your students are also geared up and that your students understand how to use the system, that they feel comfortable, because there's a lot in there for them as well. It's not just deploying assignments to them. There's additional resources. They have access to their smart books, their adaptive reading um, books. They have access to their e-books, the, the online and, and the offline e-book. 
Um, and it's making sure that students feel comfortable with the online learning process. So we, we put what we call first half class material together for them, which consists of videos, guides, short tips, walk through steps, um, where students feel comfortable. And all of this literally happens from the word go in two days. Um, and for, for instructors, you know, we that had the challenge in the, in, in, when, when COVID started and, and universities had to deliver online all of a sudden, um, within two days, they could continue with, with teaching and not have to now go and write lengthy online guides and, and, and transcripts, etc. So, so that's how we do this for you in 48 hours, and, and, and that's a quick process. Um, in terms of, you know, Connect, so how will Connect help you once you're now online? Um, I've heard a number of the speakers talk about the, the summative and the formative assessments that we have now. All of this is embedded in Connect. Um, we, you, within Connect with your formative assessments, you could make use of your smart book adaptive reading um, before class. Um, we have things like the mini sims, you know, giving them a practical experience, connecting the, the theory that students are being taught to, to real-world applications, their video content, um, interactive case studies, and the list goes on. Um, we also have simulations, so a number of either science simulations in terms of labs, anatomy and physiology dissection tools, and within the business environment we have um, business simulation games, um, and all of those are already embedded and available in Connect. So you do not have to go and either download or, or purchase any other third-party application. It's all there and available for your students to use. And that we've, what we've obviously, you know, we have the ability to, to deliver summative assessments through Connect. And um, we, I think in the past, you know, people would use it um, to some extent. We've seen courses literally running their full semester tests um, via Connect um, during, during the, the hard lockdown. Um, and it, it worked very well. Um, a lot of people did use the proctoring tools. Others didn't because you could, you know, set together a pretty good summative assessment without using proctoria or a proctoring tool. Um, but it's all then available for, for, for your students to use and for you to move online. And again, because there's such a wealth and, and, and of, of content available, um, this literally happens very quickly. It does not take you days and weeks to build an online course. And then the last point um, is, you know, I think I've seen in the, in the, in the question in the chat that, you know, people were talking about my students having access to the book. We, we know that students tend to not really buy textbooks anymore. Um, but within the Connect platform, you know, students have access to the prescribed textbook and via the Read Anywhere app, they can actually download it and, and have it offline, which seems to be, you know, a challenge not only in South Africa, it's, it's across the world. The students need to be able to have access to the content online as well as offline. Um, so just a bit on the proctoring, proctoring future, that's a new relationship and a new partnership that we've established with Proctorio, which now enables you to do, you know, various levels of proctoring with your students. And once again, we've managed to embed that for you in Connect, so you do not have to go and for the university to purchase a separate proctoring system. It's there for you to use. We've seen people using it very effectively over the past three months when they were doing some of their semester tests. Um, and you can obviously select the level of proctoring that you want to do. So that was really because, you know, we pressed for time and I tried to just give you a nutshell. So how does it work? It works very easily. You know, it starts with selecting your content and then with us holding your hand and making sure that in two days your students have access to your module, it's set up, and you can focus on the actual teaching. Um, I think we go over to the question and answer. Um, is there anything specifically, um, or Suresh, you're gonna you're gonna run the question and answer for us? I can do that, but there's one question that has come up for you, Madeleine, because you've talked about something called uh, labs and mini sims, which is all very interesting to hear. So there's a question for you that says instructors prescribe a title from a different publisher, but need a simulated lab experience for their students. Do they need to change their textbook with all of their course notes? Nope. So, so the thing about about um, our simulations and our, and our virtual labs is that um, these products are, you know, if you if you 
if you'd make use of a McGraw Hill um, Connect product, um, those will be embedded. But if you do not make use, you, you may be prescribed a different book for your physics or your chemistry um, module or business management. Is that these simulations are also available as standalone products. So you can continue to use your existing prescribed textbook, but for your online and your virtual environment, you can make use of one of the simulations. Okay, thanks. I know we're on time, but uh, please bear with us. This, if you have other commitments, we totally understand, but we'll take a few questions um, just so you know there are participants who might be waiting for their answer. Um, mm -hmm. This is a question from Ravi, and any of the participants can, any of the moderators, sorry, can answer it. I'm new to lecturing. Are there any tools for planning a lecture? Example, a pacer or a template matching outlet to activity. Hey there, I've popped a bit of an answer in the chat. I think that was a fantastic question. There are um, a yeah. lot of resources available. And I just thought maybe if we take it, you know, in a Q and A, then maybe others have the same question and maybe oh. we can answer it. I did see you answer a lot of the questions, Moina. So thank you so much for that. Oh, that's okay. I'm just going to go through the answer now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, it was a fantastic question, and I think um, some of the things that we have available in some cases might be a sample syllabus from another faculty that shows how they're actually teaching and what resources they're using. Um, we also have some pre-designed courses, and we have partnered with an organisation called the Online Learning Consortium. So they have instructional designers and uh, people who focus on on teaching excellence, and that will give you a starter that you could use to just um, tweak. And then we have tools like the instructor resource manual that, depending on the discipline, go ahead and give you lots of different um, resources and tips and tricks, ideas of how to put together a course. Um, and, and many of our authors are actually starting to release additional supplements, things like COVID-19 um, activities and, and cases, uh, how to teach online. So the best thing in that case is to reach out to your consultant and we've got many ideas to share with you and, and are happy to help. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, there's one more question which I think was very interesting. Uh, our problem is students are not attending the online session. Not sure of all the problems that students have, but seems to be connectivity issues for one hour online teaching learning sessions. Any idea? Also, we are using Zoom and Teams, so it would be great to be able to link to connect in some ways. Thank you for the presentation, and I shall share the recording version with the team. Thank, thank you, Man Koza. I hope I got that right. Um, so, 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 Rich, I just didn't catch the first part of that. I, I, I apologize. I, I caught the last part, but the first part of the question, I'm happy to answer it. But if you just maybe can just read, you know, read it out again. So sorry, my connection must have been really not so well. But sorry. The instructor just wants to know the students are not attending the online session. So I think it's more about how can I get student engagement on board? How can I have them attend the session? It's just for one hour, but they're struggling with connectivity issues or either are there any suggestions that you might have to have student engagement? Um, well, well um, I think maybe or Mark would be in a better position being, you know, actual academics to respond to the I'm happy to jump in. Yeah, I, I can, what I've experienced is that um, because I'm running Connect through the LMS uh, uh, Learner Management System, I'm using Blackboard Collaborator and I'm recording all the lessons. So I have a hundred percent reach. So what happens is if you're running it, if the students are running through VPN, then and I think University of Pretoria do that as well, then it's all free. So that means that they, the student has the flexibility of engaging or looking at that particular recording. So, so to be honest, I've had no issues around actual attendance because, because I've found that the student engages the recording whenever they feel fit. And, and, and I look at some of the activities, it, it, it's at midnight at night or it's two in the morning or whenever, whenever the case may be. So there's been a major shift in attendance because there's a 100% reach, but you have to record it. 
And that's why this high flex is going to become extremely important in the future, where you can stream live, you can give the choice to the student whether they want to attend your lecture or not, but you still have a 100% reach. Um, just to that, I just want to make a quick comment around that, and, and thanks for that, Mark. You, you know, I think there's a, with, with online teaching uh, or, or delivery, you know, there's, there's many components. So there might be your your actual recording of your of your lecture that you recorded, but then it'll be the 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 the, the work that happens to a platform like Connect. Now, normally, what we see instructors do, and we advise that is, you know, you would you would open up. Um, certain activities and allow certain time periods for them. So a student is not forced, unless they actually have to do a summative assessment, um, they're not forced to do it within that one hour. Um, they, they they normally have, you know, a few days to do those. We we have seen instructors use the the platform for, for summative assessments is that, you know, students um, are, are well advised ahead of the time to, to make sure that they've blocked out that time, that they have access to a, a, a computer or um, an iPad or a device, um, as well as stable internet connection. So it's, it's all around um, students also taking ownership of the, 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 the academic calendar planning. Um, so normally within the platform, that wouldn't have been a problem, but I do understand even if it was a live um, lecture environment that you had to record it and repost it for your students. Makes a lot of sense, Marilyn. Thank you. Thanks. Um, we'll just take one last question, and I guess that's it. So this one came uh, in privately. It says, as I'm listening and I'm asking myself how the Connect system can be linked to our university system, does it have a cost implication relating to ICT? Um, okay, so I'm happy to take that that, that question. So, I mean, there, there is obviously a cost implication for Connect um, because Connect is a is a licensed user model. Um, so every single student would have to have a license to it. Um, now we find that institutions handle this in different ways. So um, a lot of institutions would have a, a a blanket license agreement which gives a number of students access to the platform, where others. Um, would actually ask the student to, to, to purchase a license um, to give them access to, to the platform. Now, remember that because students are no longer buying textbooks, um, you know, we, we're finding that students happily take this option um, to, to, to purchase that, their, their, their license because it will give them access to their online offline book. Um, as, as well as all the activities and, and additional material. But we're finding a lot of universities are actually um, negotiating with us and we provide them with a full enterprise solution, which then includes, and this is probably a discussion for another session, but it includes more more additional services like professional development services, um, et cetera. So um, there is definitely a cost involved and, and I'm happy to have the, the discussion and the conversation with anybody that is interested in um, looking at this um, solution for, for the future. Thanks, Madeline, and thank you everyone for your great questions. If we haven't answered your questions uh, in this webinar, a McGraw Hill rep would be able to get in touch with you to answer your questions. We have a record of all the questions, so thank you so much for sending those in. Uh, I just want to say we also received a couple of questions for proctoring and plagiarism, so we have that noted as well, and we will be getting back to you with answers. Arif will be able to get in touch with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. As my colleague Asana mentioned, we will be sharing the recording of this webinar in a week's time. You will also have the option to download the certificate for the webinar, so watch out for that email that's going to pop in your inbox, and you should have the recording and the certificate. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really hope this was helpful and how you know how to understand how you can move your of courses online more quickly and effectively. And see you soon in our next webinar. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.